right, in this video, this is the highlights from a roughly 45 minute Tease Math live session that I held over in my Tease Facebook group. You can find a link to that in the description. Now, the first part of this video is cut out where I talk about the workbook updates, the Tease Math multiple choice review, and tons of other resources that I have over at my website. You can find links to all of that in the description. If you are interested in hearing all of those details, check out the live session number three, and all of these are organized in a playlist over on my YouTube channel. Also during this live session, there was a giveaway. Two students did win a copy of my Tease Math Workbook, as well as the multiple choice math review. But the main goal of this video here is for me to condense this down, and we look at four multiple choice word problems. And without further ado, let's go ahead and have a look at those now. All right, doing a mic check. Uh, can you all just reply in the chat that you can hear me okay? We're getting ready to get started right here in a second. So uh, first question is everything's multiple choice. I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to answer and then I'll come back and give you the answer and we will go over it together. So here's that first question. I'm going to put a timer on and go ahead and try it out. If you hear background noise, I'm sorry. We have uh, some neighbors over hanging out, but sorry. <laughs> And by the way, if you would like to put an answer in the chat, whether it be A, B, C, or D, feel free to do so. All right, so I will give you more time if you were to do a mini session, but I do want to get through all of these questions. I do see two answers right now of C, and C is the correct answer. I want to show you a few ways that we can get this problem uh, or get this correct answer. Uh, a few things here, nine cups of milk, that's how much milk it takes to make this ice cream and this recipe serves four people well john needs to serve 28 people at a party so one thing that goes through my brain is we're definitely going to need more milk than this uh, because that only serves four people as a matter of fact we're going to need seven times as much notice it serves four people and if we take four times seven we get 28. so we essentially have to make seven times as much or get seven times as many materials, in this case, milk, to serve these 28 people. Again, because that recipe only serves four, 28 is seven times as many. So with that in mind, if nine cups serves four people, I'm gonna take nine and I'm gonna multiply that by seven as well, and this gives us 63. So this 63 represents cups. It's gonna take 63 cups of milk to make this recipe that's going to serve 28 people. What we can do here, a quick way, is to just take the 63 cups and we want to divide this by 16 because there's 16 cups, there's that hint, there's 16 cups in one gallon. And if you take 63 divided by 16, we get 3.9375, and this is gallons. Well, the closest approximation we have there is four. And even if this was 3.1 or 3.2, you would still have to buy, or John would still have to buy four gallons. Because if you needed 3.2 gallons, three gallons wouldn't cut it. You'd have to buy four gallons of milk to get the 3.2 at least. But in this case here, I mean, 3.93, that's very close to four. John would need four gallons of milk. So I do see a lot of you did have that answer correct. There are other ways of approaching this. You could use a proportion, but what I found too is sometimes a lot of students in these live sessions or mini sessions, they wanna focus on speed, getting these answers as quick as possible. So um, that's a quick approach. Proportions could definitely be done, but it's a little bit slower. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and go on to question number two. I wanna cover all four of these tonight. And if you do have any questions, I'll try to monitor those over in the chat. But here is question number two. Give that one a shot. I'll give you about a minute, minute and a half. So as you're sitting there uh, figuring this one out or trying to figure it out, one approach is probably what a lot of people are gonna do, and it's the long approach in my opinion, but then again, if you see a problem like this, this will always work. We're trying to find one missing grade, and this student wants to have an average of an 80. So the teacher doesn't round, so the student wants to have at least an 80, and the teacher is only using these five test grades. 
So what I'm going to go ahead and do is one approach is we're going, I'm going to go ahead and take the 78. That's I'm going to add up all four of these grades that we see here. So 78, 86, 90, and a 79. Now we don't want to divide yet. If you were to add on, let's add on the 65, but I'm going to remember that number right there too. 333 is going to be the sum of these four grades here. So that's never going to change. If I add on 65 to this for that fifth one, and then we divide this by five test grades, that's not quite going to cut it because the instructor does not round. So we're talking about getting at least an 80. Let's go back to the 333. That's the sum of the first four grades. And if we add on the 67, we get 400. Let's divide that by five and boom, there's our average of an 80. So B is the correct answer, but I want to show you another way of doing this. The only way, if there's five grades, if there's five grades now, and we want an average of at least an 80, regardless, think about this, that number we just got a moment ago, 400. 400 will have to be the sum of all five grades because if you take 400 and divide by five, you get 80. I don't care what the grades are. For example, suppose a student made a one, whoops, let me clear that out. Let's say a 100 on the first test, a 100 on the second test, a 100 on the third test, a 50 on the fourth test, and a 50 on the fifth test. Look, that was five grades, 400, that's still the sum. If we divide that by five, we're gonna get 80. So another approach we could do here, since we know five grades have to add to give us 400, we can take 400 and subtract off the four grades that we do know. So minus 78, minus that 86, minus that 90, and then subtract that 79. And when we do that, check it out, we still get the 67. So an alternative approach, but again, what most people will do here is just eliminate answers or to find which one does give them an 80. And that's the thing about math, folks. I mean, there's so many ways to do these problems. Uh, there's not one specific way to do any math problem, really. There's just so many different approaches but I hope one of those two made sense. So that's number two. Again, multiple choice, we got two left. I'm going to go ahead and put the third question up here. Same thing, take about a minute, minute and a half. Uh, feel free to type your answers in. Now this one is kind of tricky. So let me go ahead and start talking about this a little bit with you. Proportions, since we haven't done, I mean, you know, I haven't showed you a proportion tonight. Sure, we could have done that first question with a proportion. I'm going to use a proportion here, but something to be careful with about proportions. You can only use a single proportion to compare two things. For example, feet and inches or uh, boys and girls, something like that. Well, here in this problem, Mr. Brown has three types of trees. He has pear trees. He has apple trees and he has pecan trees. So if I look at this first sentence, for every three pear trees, so I'm gonna put a pear, Mr. Brown has four apple trees. So I'm gonna put a four at the bottom and this represents apple. Now that proportion can only compare pears and apples. Let's look at the next sentence. For every three apple trees, you might say, well, why don't we put a three over here? Watch what I'm gonna do here. So this three represents apples, apple trees. And for every three apple trees, Mr. Brown has five pecan trees. So I'm creating two separate proportions because here I'm comparing pears to apples and over here I'm comparing apples to pecans. We cannot set these two things up in a single proportion. So why am I doing it this way? Well, now let's read this sentence right here. If there are 20 pecan trees on the farm, watch what we're gonna do here, folks. Pecan trees, cannot use this one. Nope, nothing's taught. We're not talking about pecans here. But where we can use this 20 pecans, and my pen, there it is, these 20 pecan trees we have here, where we can use that is we can use it at the bottom of this one. I'm not even gonna put a, uh, I already know that's pecan. So five, that represented pecans, this 20 represents pecans. So essentially I'm putting my pecans at the bottom, I guess you could say. 
Now, how is this going to help us? Well, the only thing we can solve for in this proportion is going to be the number of apple trees we have. So let's cross multiply and divide. And something I have preached in many sessions, I've actually started mentioning it in my live sessions. The quick way to do a proportion all in one swoop is you always divide by the number that's going to be with the variable. So when we cross multiply, we're going to have the 3 and the 20 getting multiplied. And then when we cross multiply this way, we're going to have the 5 getting multiplied by the 8. So the shortcut here is this, folks. The 5 is what we're going to divide by because that's the number that's with the variable. So in one swoop, I'm going to cross multiply my 3 times 20, and then I'm going to immediately divide by 5, and this tells us what A is. How is this going to help us hang tight? So this tells us we have 12 apple trees. Well, now that we know that, we can tie that in over here. Think about it. Three pairs, four apples. Well, now we know we have 12 apples because we use that over here. I'm using this proportion to help me with this one. And now we can solve for pairs. So same thing. Quickly cross multiply, 3 times 12, that's going to give us 36. And then we immediately divide by the number that's going to be with the variable. In this case, we're going to divide by 4, and we get a final answer of 9. Therefore, Mr. Brown is going to have 9 pear trees. Now, I do have a video of this over on my YouTube channel. If you were to search my channel or search my website, if you type in the word tricky, I think that's going to be one of those problems where you're comparing three things. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it was pets or something. I can't remember. I have several of these examples in my workbook. I have several of these examples on the multiple choice uh, 100 plus question thing, the thing I'm going to be giving away tonight. But I, this one, I, I know for a fact that people have seen questions like this on the T's test where you're comparing three things and not two things. Now, also, if you check out that video on my YouTube channel, it's the one, like I said, it's tricky or something like that. I actually show you different approaches. I just don't have time to show you all of those approaches tonight. That way I can cover all of these problems with you all. But I do like a visual approach. Um, so check that out. Yeah, that one is tricky. I know I see some comments over there. But uh, yeah, so one more problem and then we'll get to the giveaway. Last one for tonight. Multiple choice. Give it a shot. All right. I do see a bunch of uh, answers that are correct here. A bunch of A's. Sweet. And A is correct. It's uh, 147. And what you have to be careful with about ratio problems is they're really going to get you on the type of question they're asking. So the ratio of boys to girls, whenever you see the word ratio, and if we have boys to girls, what this really means, and folks, I'm not going to lie to you, this was a ratio problem. This one we just did with Mr. Brown, but now we actually have the word ratio. So what this means is we got boys, that's boys, two girls, that's our girls. The order does matter. So boys is the first one, girls is the second one based on how it's worded. So if I write three over four, this actually represents the boys up top, and then we have girls. Now you can set this up, whoops, that's sloppy. Um, you can set this up various ways, but this is just one way. Daggone it. So with this in mind, it says if there are 84 girls in the senior class. So since I did set up girls right here, I can put the girls right here on this side. Now, the only thing we can solve for in this proportion that we've set up, and again, something else I should hit on too, you may see ratios written like that, but you can simply write a ratio as a fraction. No problems. But the only thing we can find in this problem, folks, is we can find the number of boys. That's all, period. So let's cross multiply, same technique. Gonna cross multiply the three by the 84, and then I'm going to immediately divide by the number that's with the variable. In this case, we're going to divide by four, press enter, we get 63. I should have actually included that one as one of the answer choices, but I, I didn't, that was my fault. 
So right now we get B equals 63. Now had that been an answer choice, some of you may have picked it and that's because you didn't read the question to see what it was really asking. The question says, what is the total number of students in the senior class? Well, we already know we got 84 girls. 84 girls and then the 63 boys, that's the total number of students. So make sure you read this question. Total number of students. If the question did say how many boys are in the class, then yes, you would have said 63. But the total number of students is going to be 17147. And yes, that is A, our final answer. All right, sweet. So congratulations, uh, ladies. Um, and for those of y'all that didn't win, uh, I'll do this again probably sometime. I'm not going to do any mini sessions before the holidays. Uh, holidays are busy for all of us anyway. But you all, I hope this little mini session or free session, live session was helpful. Thanks for being a member of the group. Uh, if y'all have any questions, tag me in the group, math related. I'll be happy to help. And I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. The two winners that won, hang tight. I'm getting ready to private message you right here shortly. Folks, y'all take care. Happy holidays. Bye-bye.